How's it going guys? Like and subscribe to keep the dream alive. Back at it again with another video. Today we're going to be doing the duckbill modification to the Harbor Freight tire changer. Now, I know there's a lot of videos out there on this, but some of them I felt weren't super descriptive. And I've been wanting to do this mod for a while, and I figured, hey, why not make my own video? So... The duckbill modification, what it does is it takes this center shaft here that screws on and off and holds your tire rim on and you create a rotating assembly off of this that you purchase a duckbill mounting and demounting tool that helps take the tire off. I had already hammered one shaft collar on It wasn't easy and I didn't want to take this back off, so I went ahead and left it for the video. I also took a flap disc attachment and took a lot of the paint off. The way it comes from the factory, the paint's so thick. Technically, this is a two inch pipe, but with the paint, it makes it a lot thicker. And this is a two inch bore shaft collar and I could not get it to fit over it with the factory paint, so I had to strip a lot off, and it still was a pain to hammer that shaft collar on. I'll be putting links to everything I had to purchase in this project in the um, description. Uh, before we get started though, we'll need to take a few measurements. A normal rim is 15 to 16 inches. So you take from the middle here, the radius of we'll say 16 inches, would be eight. We're gonna go a little bit bigger, you know, truck tires, 24 inch rims. I'd rather overdo it and have room to grow than not have enough and kick myself later for not making everything longer. So we're gonna go, uh, We'll say 24 inch rim, so you'll want this piece that comes off of this at least 12 inches, um, somewhere around there. You could go a little bit shorter, I suppose, um, because also you're not coming from this center point. You'll have a piece of pipe that goes over this, and this will just be used as the center point of the rotating assembly. And then we'll want to take a rough measurement here from the center of the rim to the top of the shaft collar. It's about 10 inches. We'll say about nine inches is how long you wanna make your uh, tubing that adjusts the height of the assembly. Now for our center pipe that's gonna go over this, um, we have to take into account, like I said, 11 16 for this shaft collar. There'll be one on the bottom, which is another 11 16 plus two bearings. So probably somewhere around um, two inches. And the measurement of this, just with that one shaft collar is about eight and three eighths, something like that. So if we unscrew that center part, you'll see here this is threaded. There's a screw in there that screws in, which holds the rim down. This is a piece that came with the Harbor Freight tire changer. Um, now, as you can see, it's, it's bent downwards. A lot of people don't like it though, had complaints that it scratches the rim because it goes over like that, holds your rim down at those four points. And a lot of people recommend a, um, it's a centering cone and they range about 40 or 50 bucks. I'll put a link in the description like everything else. Now, I didn't want to spend that much on just a metal aluminum cone, and I found this, which is a piece off of a machine that is beveled on the edge, and I figured, hey, that's perfect because it goes on and holds the rim and centers it. Now, it does have this little lip here. <clears throat> now, this is very hard steel, I could probably grind it, but it would take a long time. And I figure, eh, you know, it's not a big deal leaving it on there. 
So what I did was I got this two and a quarter inch uh, conduit reducing washer that, so when I put this on, it centers our rim up. Then this washer will go on there to help for when this goes on, this bottom part will sit against that washer and everything will be all good. So here's some of the things I'll be using for this project. Uh, a lot of the metal is just scrap metal I cut down. You know, stuff I had laying around and figure I could use. You can go out and purchase exactly what you want if you need to or if you want to make it absolutely perfect. But uh, for what I'm doing, I think all this stuff will work out great. And then I purchased some things off Amazon like these thrust bearings. Um, you have your bearing and then two washers. And then, of course, the shaft collars. They are two inch bore and like I said, 11 sixteenths wide. Um, I'll give you some of the measurements. Now I didn't film um, cutting all the metal and taking off all the paint because since it was scrap metal, a lot of it was painted and I'll have to remove the paint and repaint everything. I don't really like cutoff wheels. They're not my favorite. They're scary, they're dangerous. I was having better luck cutting with this. Use what you want. If you have a oxyacetylene torch, that would work great if you're handsy with it and know how to use it right. Um, to remove the paint, I used a flap disc on the cutoff wheel. They also sell, you know, you could use something like this or um, these polycarbonate uh, attachments. This is for my drill. These work pretty good. They wear out, but until they wear out, they work awesome. I also have a big one for the cutoff wheel. So this is a pipe <clears throat> right here that we'll be building our assembly off of. I cut it to seven and an eighth inch because after I have that shaft collar and that shaft collar and you see the thickness of two of these bearings that'll work about perfect. You definitely could go shorter because the length of this actually doesn't matter too much as long as you have enough for the thickness of the square tubing you're going to be using to extend out from. Uh, so really, I mean, I guess you could make it that tiny if you wanted to. We're not doing all that. Now for our pipe, that's going to be extending outwards. Like I said before, when we were measuring the rim, let's just say on the most absurd scale, we're doing a 24 inch rim. The radius of that would be 12 inches. So I cut this to 12 and an eighth inch. Um, I measured this square tubing and it measured out to nine or one and nine sixteenths. Uh, it's probably actually one and a half inch outer diameter square tubing. So this piece, which has a hole drilled in it for our set screw, um, will go on the outside and allow us to adjust uh, the width. This is a two inch outer diameter square tubing and the inner diameter is one and a half. Uh, a little bit more so it'll fit over there, but honestly it fits pretty snug. This will go like that so we can set our height adjustment. I cut this to one and a half inches, which this will be our height adjustment, which will go in there. I cut it to nine inches. Um, this is one and a half inch diameter square tubing. We will need to drill a hole in this for a set screw, just like this one. This is a quarter inch plate. I cut it to four inches, the duckbill, mod that I bought, it came with this. The thing about using a round pipe is all you have is these set screws. There's not a flat side in here to keep it from twisting around. So I'm going to go ahead and go with the square pipe and I'm going to use this plate. I cut it to four inches. Well, actually I cut it a little bit short on accident. It's three and seven eighths. It's just about perfect there. And I'll drill some holes so I can use these bolt holes that came already pre-drilled in the duck bill. And um, I'm gonna weld our height adjustable pipe 
in the center of this. Now the bearings I got um, is probably the thing I don't like least about this, but I was having trouble finding something that would work absolutely perfect for this. So technically this pipe is two inches with the paint on it makes it a little bit thicker. If that bearing had a two inch bore with the hell I had putting this shaft collar on, it wouldn't be able to rotate. It wouldn't spin. So I had to go a little bit bigger and I've preferably I would have liked to have got a 52 millimeter bore bearing set that would have been a little bit over two inches and would have fit about perfect. Unfortunately, all I could find was this, which is 55 millimeter bore or uh, 2.165 inches. So it does sit in there, but there is quite a bit of room. Now, the thing about it is this will set on there. And it sits on there good enough. Like I said, 52 millimeter would have been ideal, but working with what I could get. And when this is all assembled and everything's together, it won't have a whole lot of room to uh, move around with. So like I said, all this metal was scrap metal I already had. And this pipe, as you can see in there, was pretty grimy. I'm guessing originally this was a two inch inner bore pipe. Um, it's a little bit over two inches and I didn't have a two inch hone. So what I ended up doing to clean up the inside of this was using a two inch hole saw and I think it cleaned up pretty nicely. Now the first thing I'm going to do to start building the assembly is, as you can see, I stripped all the paint off this end because I'm going to notch it so I can weld it. So what I'm going to do to get my measurements to notch is I'm going to take my pipe, I'm going to set it on here and kind of line it up to where uh, the pipe is just touching the outer edges of the square tubing and I'll just kind of Here's my marks, and like I said, you know, it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. None of this is exact science. This is just kind of a guide for when I take my cutoff wheel, I can cut a notch that will wrap around this pipe so I can weld it. So here's the notch I cut. It's not absolutely perfect, but it's good enough. I went ahead and switched back to my 40 grit flap disc so I can try to round this out even better and get a better tight fit. And there we go. It's not perfect. I cut about a 45 degree angle here for a root for the weld. Um, honestly though, the pipe fits in there pretty nice. There is a little gap, but with that root, uh, it should fill in pretty nice. Since I'm using flux core on 120 volt to weld, I'm gonna go ahead and preheat the metal with the propane torch to assure that I get good penetration. I started trailing a little bit and burnt right there. Okay, so I finished welding everything up uh, and it came out okay. You know, I haven't been welding for long. So, I'm still not the greatest, but the more I weld, the better I'll get. Um, got a little hot spot there in the corner. 
Other than that though, for using flux core, uh, I think it turned out all right. When I was test fitting our height adjustment bar that goes in there, you can see there's a little bit of a gap there. And with one set screw, if I tighten it up, it grabs a bar fine, but I can pick it up. There's still just a little bit of flex. So what I'm gonna do is drill another hole and weld another uh, nut on the side. Uh, if you can see there, I already took my hammer and punch and punched a hole, throw it on the drill press and get us a hole drilled. So when I welded the last nut, I had some problem with it wiggling around when I was trying to attack it. So I took one of my set screw bolts and um, put it in through the bottom to hold the nut in place so it won't move around while I tack it. Okay, so here it is. Uh, for some reason, my camera didn't record while I was welding it. I only got the tack welds on film. Um, it turned out fairly okay. Like I said, you know, I'm only welded a few times. Uh, I was having an issue. I was moving too slow here. That's why it's kind of globby. And then uh, my start and stop didn't blend too well. But overall, it's a nut welded onto a piece of metal. So we're going to use this plate as the backing for our duck bill, like that. And if you see these two holes, this one and this one, a bolt goes through and bolts a plate. <clears throat> it actually came with this, which bolts on there so you can use a uh, circular pipe and that will adjust the height. We're going to go with a plate and weld it to this and that will be our height adjustment before we do that though we need to drill two holes in this to uh, fasten it to the duck bill now you could use uh, I don't know some caulk or some sort of paint put both the bolts through put that caulker paint on the tip of the bolt and press down and leave it imprint and drill there we're not going to do that um, it's hard to get it exact that way. So I'm going to take some measurements and draw center lines going both ways so we know where to draw our holes. Um, looks like about <clears throat> 9.8 centimeters. So half of that will do 4.6. It doesn't have to be perfect, but fairly close because I cut this plate almost perfect. Uh, to fill on the back of that duck bill. On this side, we got about four centimeters, so half of that would be two. I'm using centimeters because it just so happens it lines up perfect. So, a lot easier than dealing with fractions, you know what I'm saying? We got our two, we'll put another one so we know we're lining up. Okay, take our speed square. Okay, so now that we have our vertical and horizontal center lines drawn, we're going to take some measurements from our duck bill to get exactly where our center holes need to be. So make sure our caliper is zeroed out. And we're going to measure the bore of the hole. I'm getting 9.52. We're going to go ahead and round that to make it 9.5, give or take. These aren't exactly accurate. We're going to measure the distance the holes are apart. Okay, I'm getting 57.9. We'll do a little math to find out where we need our holes to be. So I measure them with the caliper to be 57.9 millimeters apart. And the hole bore is 9.5 millimeter. So if I take half of 57.9, I get 28.95. And if I take half of the bore, I get 4.75 millimeters and add those up 
and we get 33.7 millimeters. So going back to our center line here, we will want to go 33.7 millimeters from each point and that should give us exactly where we need to drill our hole. So again, we'll want to zero our calipers out, make sure they're all the way, zero, and we're going to go 33.7 from the center line. I guess it doesn't have to be exactly uh, right on because the drill bit I'm going to use, I'm going to go just a hair bigger to give me a little uh, wiggle room. And there we go, we have our two dots, one over here and one over here, don't mind the other two. Now that we have our reference mark for our bolt holes all measured and drawn on the plate, we're going to go ahead and set our duckbill back on and you can see there's the center, we have a hole in the center of that hole and a mark in the center of that hole. So we just want to double check everything. Now, like I said, I am going to use a little bit bigger drill bit than the bolt is just to give ourselves a little bit of wiggle room. So it turned out fairly nice. Could use some longer bolts, but this is okay for now. It holds on there nice and snug. Um, you can tell the holes aren't exactly center. I don't think my measurements were off. I think when I used my punch and started drilling with the drill press, the piece of metal scooted over a little bit. Um, that's okay though, because it holds on there good. And later, if we want to make this a little bit nicer, we could take this and trace out the silhouette of this and cut it exactly perfect to fit in the recession of this duck bill. And it just look a little bit nicer. For now though, we're gonna roll with this, go ahead and weld the square tubing in the middle here and good to go. And here's the finished product. Um, I'm pretty happy with the way it turned out. The welds aren't the greatest, but the more I weld, the better I'm getting at it. Um, I did do some cleanup on this bottom part because that's the last thing I welded. And I just wanna clean it up. So I have the set screws. This part will go uh, around the piece that came with the tire changer and I have the shaft collar that will go up top shaft collar that will go on the bottom with bearings around it and that will rotate around it this set screw loosen that up we can adjust it um, so I measured it when it was all the way and from here to the center of this pipe <clears throat> is a little bit over 12 inches so I'll be able to do a 24 inch rim and then I have the set screw here set screw here which adjusts the height I don't want to undo them right now because it'll fall really I don't think I did a bad job for someone who doesn't know nothing about welding um, my grinding skills are getting decent so now what I'm going to do is go around, clean it up. I took the grinder and ground the top of these bolts. And I have this 3 8 rod and I took a marker and marked <clears throat> two inches. So I'm going to cut three of them and weld them to the top of the bolts so I can have some torque when I'm twisting them, make sure they're tight, not just using my fingers. 
then I'm going to go around, clean everything up, and paint it. So one more thing, I put two set screws, one on each side. I have seen some videos where people drilled right in the corner and then the set screw pushes on the corner of the square tubing and locks it in place in that corner. So that round rod I cut, um, I welded it on. I ended up having to take my bench grinder and grind in a little flat spot on them so I could get a good tack. Uh, they came out pretty good. Now, I did run into a problem, and this is why you need to test fit everything before you make a weld or do whatever, because I'm gonna have to fix it. I should have welded this higher up, because look how close, and it's almost all the way, I have to have this all the way up to get the duck bill over. Second off, It does not line up with the tire. Look at that. <clears throat> Cause I'm a dummy. I should have tested that before I welded this plate and drilled the holes for the duck bill. Um, so I think I have a fix for it, but this is a super bummer cause I thought everything was all good and well. I already put these shaft collars on and my bearings on so I could check everything out and I didn't want to do it yet. That's why I didn't notice this at first because these collars are really hard to get on and off. Um, another thing I don't like is the bearings that I found to use. See it moving around because I need a way to center this up with the pipe. Now this fits on there fairly snug. There is enough room for it to move around on the center pipe without that moving. I don't have it all the way screwed down. That's why it's moving. Um, just enough room to fit some grease in there and let it rotate freely, but not really enough to put like some sort of shim or something in there. So I was thinking to center it since this pipe is so thick, I'm going to try to grind around the edges and like leave it tapered. So it at least this much of the pipe taper it so it centers these bearings out 55 millimeter bore um, that should be fine to center each bearing and I will do it at like a cone angle so it should still rotate freely I think that's my fix on that this is a little bit different so what I came up with is I think I'm going to end up using this because since it's circular it allows it to spin freely then you have the set screws on the side to tighten it up um, this is a 28 millimeter bore on Amazon the same company also sold a 30 millimeter bore I didn't originally plan on using this so I didn't get the 30 millimeter now I have this piece of pipe I believe it's electrical conduit it measures out to uh, one 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 sixteenth inch or 27 millimeters roughly and if it's in there fairly snug there is a little bit of play but with the set screws that should help jam it in there as you can see I took a marker and drew a line I am going to cut that and weld that little piece onto the bottom of this plate run the original adapter so then that allows me to move this duckbill as I need it, different size tires, whatever. There's many ways you could do this. I could cut this off and restart. I could cut this off and weld a round tube on there and just go full round tube. This fits on here, good. And then it can rotate to wherever you need it. Set the set screw here. Like I said, I kept this plate on here just because I had already welded on there, cleaned it up. It looks nice. I figured uh, the hole that's drilled in here, I could put a chain through it with a designated Allen key for the duck head. I tried grinding a taper on it and it didn't work. It didn't fit through the bearing. So I thought, hey, I came up with a different idea. What I did was 
I had this scrap sheet metal. Um, I don't know, it's probably 18 gauge, 19 gauge, something like that. What I did was I drew lines on it and cut out strips and um, cut them and welded the strip together to make a, a shim, basically. I made two of them, one for the top, one for the bottom. They just barely, one of them's tighter than the other one, but as you can see, it fits on there pretty good. So to figure out the size of the shim you need to make, uh, you'll have to do a little bit of math. But first off, what I did was I measured the thickness of the bearing this way, came up with about 5.2 millimeters, and then also measure, measured the bore of the bearing, did some math. So the bore came out to be 55.25 millimeters and then the thickness of the bearing. Now when I when I measured the thickness of the bearing, I lightly loaded it. I didn't let it free, but I also didn't squeeze it as hard. Just kind of lightly loaded it and measured out to 5.2 millimeters. Uh, times that by two, I came up with 10.4 millimeters. So with my two shims, that was the thickness I needed to cut the metal and split it into two. Um, so I need to cut out at least 10.4 millimeters to cut that in half and make two shims out of it. Um, the tire shaft, the, uh, the center part that we're making this whole rotating assembly off of came out to 5 uh, 51.08 millimeters, uh, round that up to 51.1. So I took the bore of the bearing minus the uh, diameter of the shaft and came up with the 4.1 millimeter gap. So that's the difference I needed to make up. I measured the sheet metal to 1.28 millimeters thick times that by two because when you're doing diameter I'll have that thickness on each side of the pipe came up to 2.56 millimeters now we're a little bit short of the 4.1 but the goal is to get there as closely as we can because if I made two separate shims this that would be um, at least five millimeters and that would be too thick and the bearing wouldn't fit over it so that little bit of difference, um, just enough to take up some of the free play in the bearing so they don't move around as much. Then we had to find our circumference. Um, the equation of circumference is C equals 2 pi r or C equals diameter pi, which is what we did. So took the uh, bore or diameter times pi, came up with... Uh, 173.49 then I did two of them came up with 347 millimeters so since I need two shims I needed to cut at least that length that could be cut into two and same thing with this thickness I need to cut at least that thick that could be divided into two so there is still a little bit of play but not nearly as much and they won't rotate around. Now ideally, look, if you can find the right size bearing, like I said, I think it was 52 millimeters, go for it. I couldn't find one unless if, look, I found some, but they wanted, you know, uh, 10 to $20 a piece. And there is no way I'm paying 10 to $20 for a damn needle bearing. Um, so I got what I could off Amazon. I cut the top part of this off where I shaped it like a cone. So just took a little bit off, that's fine. I also had to shave my shins down. Now I don't have a belt sander and um, I don't have a bandsaw either. So again, I used a cutoff wheel to cut them and then I had to use my bench grinder to grind them to the size to where they would fit inside of this bearing. Now I measured them at 5.2 millimeters. Um, it's probably best 
if you go a little bit smaller I didn't want to go too small because this part is fairly thin and I wanted it to the shim to fit inside the whole bearing uh, I fitted them they seem to work okay put the last shim on this one fits a little tighter so I might have to get something to hammer it down make sure it still rotate and hammer it down too much and it looks like I might have shit. Squeeze it off a little bit. Um, seems to rotate pretty good. <clears throat> I didn't grease the center shaft up yet um, because I'm still probably going to paint it. See this. barely any play now so the shims took care of all almost all that play which you wouldn't want to make them too tight anyways because you want the bearings to be able to rotate and here it is so rotates fairly well on a few of the videos i saw of people doing this uh, they recommended using a spacer which someone sells a spacer for it along with the uh, centering cone. What I did though was I just took a threaded piece like this and um, used that as a spacer. So <clears throat> the diameter of this center part has to not fall into the spacer and sit along the rim. And then the uh, bottom of it has to also set on that centering cone. And as long as you got that, you're fine. Uh, once I put this down, there was still probably inch and a half to thread this piece onto. If you see, the duckbill lines up now. And you take the set screws. <clears throat> I have it tightened down right now so it won't rotate. But I did it just about perfect. Um, undo that and this. It drops down and you can take the rim off that way loosen this up scoot it out I'm gonna have to take this back apart because I am going to uh, rattle can paint everything and then I'm also going to uh, grease up the center here I almost recommend spending the extra money and getting the type of bearing that will fit perfect on there I just found the cheapest one that would work and again I had to make the shims which isn't ideal but it seems fairly centered on there I can't complain too much I would probably go with the sol uh, smaller size square tubing we'll probably order the 30 millimeter one um, and have just a circular um, rod about this length I think it's about uh, 9 or 10 inches then you wouldn't even need you know this plate here and everything again the centering cone you can order online is like 45 bucks for just a hunk of a machined aluminum i'm not down with paying that that piece that i found uh works good enough i mean we're talking about changing tires here it ain't that big of a deal as long as it's centered on there i'll probably also do a little modification for uh for this figure out some way to um, make sure the lug holes line up other than that uh, it's pretty good I'm probably going to end the video here uh, I might do an update later once I get it all painted and we can change a couple tires or something but for now I'm going to leave it you know how it is I'm not ready to change any tires I had just bought this tire changer and uh, I just was looking for a project want something cool to do Okay, so remember, like, and subscribe, and keep living the dream. Peace.